Hi, this is Al with Honolulu Wechiru, and um, I am back from taking a vacation and uh, just recuperated from COVID, and I just uh, am happy to be back, happy to be making videos again, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to talk about something that uh, is very important to me, and that's training with a disability or training with a physical challenge. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of us have been facing lots and lots of challenges in life recently, and I just want to try and encourage people and let them know, particularly my students, um, and for my students after maybe I'm gone, uh, I want to leave some, some input for you that um, will hopefully inspire you even after where I'm gone because you know death comes for all of us sooner or later hopefully it'll be much later but uh, I do want to leave a record for you so uh, as you students of mine know I train with a physical disability and it was caused in the year 2000 I was in a very bad horse riding accident which completely shattered my tibia from my knee all the way down to my ankle. My knee was facing backward at the time of the accident and uh, what the doctors had to do was to drill holes through my leg, through the bone, push basically bicycle spokes through my bone, put washers on the ends of that, push them together and, and draw the bone together. My, my bone had just splintered from the top to the bottom and they attached those bicycle spokes to rings around my leg as a frame and so this device is called an external fixator and it goes it went all the way from my thigh all the way down to my ankle I had six rings 13 pins and two screws holding everything together for eight months uh, during that eight months I was on crutches when I could finally get out of bed uh, once they cut those bicycle spokes off with bolt cutters and pulled them out with pliers, wrapped my leg up with gauze, sent me home on a walker to learn how to walk again. Uh, because I was in traction basically for eight months, my knee was completely frozen straight, my heel was completely, my, my ankle was completely uh, like spaghetti. Uh, I had no muscle control in my leg whatsoever, so I had to learn how to walk again. Uh, once the holes had healed up in my leg where the penetrations had been, uh, I got into the pool where I lived and I, the water would hold me up. I was buoyant and so I could actually walk sort of uh, in the water and I would walk back and forth doing San Chin Kata from one side of the pool to the other. And I did this every single day. And I was also going to physical therapy. Physical therapy, if you're in an accident and they give you, or you have surgery and they give you physical therapy, you have to do the work. Uh, I did the work, but I believe that the San Chin uh, practice and my karate practice and the mindset that I had gained from practicing karate for so many years actually helped me uh, push through this challenge, this physical challenge, and continues to help, help me push through today. Uh, I, you know, not many of us will get into a fight, but all of us will experience terrible things in our life. We will experience loss. We will experience accidents. We will experience sickness. We will experience some very tough things. And I'm strongly of the opinion that the martial arts, one of the prime benefits of showing up to class every single training session and pushing through our limitations, I'm strongly of the opinion that that is one of the most important things that we can get from the martial arts is to learn how to work through these challenges. So I have to work through this on a continuing basis as well. Uh, 
after my leg had been rehabilitated to the best of my ability through PT and through my, my training, I still suffer what they call incompetent veins. So every single day, every single morning, when I first wake up in the morning, I have to put on this extremely uncomfortably tight surgical support hose. I have to wear this all day long until I get into bed at night to go to bed. Whenever I am at home, I have to raise my leg up higher than my heart and put it up on pillows because of my incompetent veins, the blood leaks out of my veins. The veins, the, the veins in my right leg are shot and I'm a high uh, risk category for venous thrombosis and uh, pulmonary embolism. So that could happen. Uh, I acknowledge it, I recognize it, and I accept it. Uh, I do whatever I can to mitigate that possibility. So I wear the, the compression hose, I put my leg up whenever I can. Exercise is actually quite good for me. Sitting down is the worst thing I can possibly do. There's valves in your legs that open and close. And they keep the blood from going back down in your leg. They keep it pumping back up to your heart. In my case, those, va those valves are destroyed. So if I sit for any length of time, the blood will leak out. You can see here where it's actually stained my ankle and you can see where the, 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 the copper in my blood has come out and, and stained my skin around this area red. Uh, the other problem that I have if I don't take care of myself is I will develop venous ulcers on my ankle. I've developed several of those in the past couple decades, although I seem to have that under control, knock on wood, uh, through my practice of elevating my leg and using the surgical support hose and getting as much exercise as I possibly can. Um, my knee has developed uh, better flexion than flexation than, than it ever has before. And I can bend my knee 90 degrees and that's as good as it gets. So I have to modify my karate. I have to do things, uh, my stance, I maybe have to modify a little bit. My kicks, I have to modify a little bit. Um, certain things I have to work around. Uh, my, my jump back in Saison, that doesn't happen very well anymore. It's extremely uncoordinated, so I typically just step back into Saison. Uh, unless I'm feeling really, really good that day. Uh, so these are some of the things that I think we need to be aware of as um, practitioners is we have to work uh, within our limitations although we try to push past our limitations whenever possible but we also should have compassion for ourselves so we want to be an equal balance of stoicism and compassion and we should always have compassion for others. So you can be, as you know, practice stoicism for yourself, but for others, uh, even our, when you're a sensei, you still have to have compassion. You, you have to find a fine line between how far can I push this person uh, to do better, to, to improve, to become a stronger karate practitioner. We have to learn the balance. And you, my dear students, as you progress through the ranks and you become sensei to students of your own, please bear this in mind. And I, uh, I hope that you are getting my meaning here to find balance in your life. Push yourselves, but also have compassion. Anyway, I'm hoping that this is inspirational to everybody. And I'm hoping that we will see you at the park training with us. And if you did enjoy this video, if you got anything out of it at all, please hit the like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. It's free and uh, it will really help out the channel and our club. And um, you'll be the first to be notified about any new content. And so. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I've tried to be as authentic and real as possible with you. 
Have a wonderful day and warmest aloha to you.